Yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Gripper back here with another video for you guys today. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about why 2023 Top Series 1 has completely failed. And I mean completely, I mean completely failed. So I have some new things for you guys today to hear about because what I've seen with my own eyes... You can't convince me otherwise Series 1 failed. So, guys, before we get into that, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on this video? That would be awesome if you guys can do that for me, as that's the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button. And speaking of growing the channel, I am doing a giveaway. I'm giving away Hobby Packs of 2023 Top Series 1. All you guys got to do is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on post notifications for all the content right here on the channel, and last but certainly not least, leave a comment in the comment section which you're most looking forward to in the 2023 MLB season. I'll pick a winner once I hit 6,000 subscribers. So there is that. And baseball season is officially back. First spring training games are today at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I think there's two of them today, but still, everybody plays on Saturday, so today's really the official start, so that's pretty cool. Going to be watching one of the two. I don't know which one yet. Whatever one's the better one, I guess. I think the Royals and the Rangers, no, it's the, uh, I believe it's the Mariners and the and the um, Rangers, I believe, are playing one game. I think the Padres and somebody else are playing the other one. I don't remember, but it's there's two games, but we have a package today i don't want to you know show the whole package off because i i posted it yesterday in my in my my feed and what it is is i got nine hanger boxes of series one i i don't know how to feel about these i, I really don't you could see the odds for yourself um if if the camera will pick that up uh they're, they're not good they're, they're not good and what i'm going to talk about today and this is going to be placed right here where the series two one is so bye bye vladimir guerrero jr and hello Julio Rodriguez, that's where that's going. And, you know, with the news I have today, I have two things to talk about. One of which my friend texted me literally no more than 30 minutes ago about this because a local a Walmart of ours restocked. And it's kind of funny what he told me. And then the second one is more substantial because, you know, I have never seen this before in my life until today, or I should say yesterday. And it's, it's amazing to me because that practically tells me what I'm going to tell you is series one has failed. And what do I mean by fail? So let's get that out of the way first. When I say series one has failed, I'm talking about the re uh, retail side of things, right? I'm not talking about hobby because hobby flourished. Hobby for series one, for jumbos especially, sold out very, very quickly. Uh, I talked to all my local card shops in the area. They all sold out within the first two days. My one I go to, which never sells out, sold out within the first three hours. So luckily I got there in time because I was actually thinking about going later in the day, but good thing my brother convinced me otherwise because if if we would have went later in the day, they would have been gone. Uh, I talked to all the other LCSs and my others. Two other ones, I talked to them both, or all three of them. They're all three sold out. And they're all three not getting them back because the distributors they go through, and they go through three different ones, they are all completely sold out. The distributors are completely sold out. They can't get any more back in. That's that, okay? Hobbies, like the $100 or the, the $85 boxes, which, I like I said, I bought mine for $75. And now they are going about $90 to $95. So they're going up again. Whenever you see, this is a little tidbit of information if you guys never caught on to this. If you see things going up in price, like as we see with the jumbos and the hobbies now, that means A, they're getting harder to come by, and two, um, the demand is high. So that is a little tidbit for you guys. So that's why I'm, you know, I'm keeping up with these prices because, you know, with with the prices going up, that tells you that jumbos, I know for a fact, are completely gone pretty much. And hobbies, I guarantee you, are a matter of time. I give it two under two weeks before we say goodbye to the hobby box format, because those will probably be 120, 130-ish pretty soon, probably give or take two, three, maybe a month. I don't know. 
So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. But I'm lucky I got my Series 1. I got nine hanger boxes. I got one blaster box. I might, now call me crazy, I might get one more blaster box because a couple members of the channel want me to open one for a members only video. That's the only reason why I'm doing it. If I didn't have a members only section, which by the way, if you don't know, I have memberships and I recommend you do one and it's five bucks a month because uh, I'm a lot more unfiltered on there to say the least. Uh, I like to be more free and we open full blaster boxes and things like that. It's a lot more fun on there. So if you guys are interested in that, Make sure to check it out. I think you can only do it on the PC, but I'm not too sure. But yeah, I might get another blaster box just to do a members only video, but that is literally it. I plan on using these hanger boxes for members only videos. That's why I bought nine of them. Um, and then one for obviously the, the background here so we could put in the hanger box section of the video. But I'm gonna tell you today, and let me get let me get a, a sip of my Pepsi here. Mouth's a little dry, but um, you know. My friend texted me today, like 30 minutes ago, and I woke up from my nap. And yes, I'm 21 years old, and I, I take naps still, okay? It is what it is. But um, So he texted me. He said, dude, and by the way, by the way, FYI, he has no idea I do this on YouTube, okay? He has no idea that I'm grip and rip sports cards, uh, you know, things like that. I like to keep myself a secret, so not too many people know what I actually, like, I look like. Um, and for that matter, not too many people in my personal life even know that I do this. I like to keep this very secretive, but a lot of you have been asking for a face reveal. It's coming sooner rather than later, because what we're doing uh, when the start of the season starts, uh, we're going to be doing watch-alongs, Sunday Night Baseball watch-alongs, I think, if I can get hooked up and everything like that correctly. So you'll see my face on those streams, obviously, so that's coming very soon. But not too many people know I do this, and he does not, so he has no idea that I do this. And he texted me 30 minutes ago because my one of my local Walmart tree stocks, the one that he goes to, he said, dude, war of advice, stay completely the F away from Series 1 retail. That is literally his exact text to me. He said he bought three blasters and one hanger box, not a single gold, not a single royal blue, not a single rainbow foil. All he got were stars of the MLB, base cards, and commemorative relics in three blaster boxes, which that's $75, and a hanger box, which is $12. So practically $95, let's say $100. He spent about $100 on Series 1 retail. What else do I need to say, guys? What else do I need to say? Seriously. Um, you know, I told him, I was just texting him like not too long ago, like two couple minutes ago before his video started. I was like, yeah, I just, I'm completely staying away from it. And like I said, he has no idea that this is me. So he may have actually watched a couple videos of mine, uh, maybe. Because from what I can tell, a lot of different people, like I have like over 200,000 people a month that actually see my content on YouTube. Just imagine if every single one of those people subscribed, by the way. I'd literally have a million, a million subscribers by now, which, I mean, in the baseball card realm, that's never going to happen because the... The max I expect to get in my YouTube journey is 100K, and after I get that, you know, I could say I succeeded. But, um, you know, you know, I, I was texting, and I was like, you know, it, it's a shame. It's a shame how, you know, watered down Series 1 is. And, you know, Series 1 is completely watered down. More watered down than we've ever seen before, you know. And some people are saying I got the math wrong with Series 1 jumbos. Um, I literally said 80,000 in my video. There is one guy who literally made a video about me, like, saying I got the math wrong. I was like, what? I literally said, if I could find my notebook, which I don't know exactly where it is right now, I'll show you I have the number 80,000 jumbo boxes written down in my notebook. Um, but again, you know, people like to use my name for views. It's whatever. But, um, you know, I was like, I was telling him, I was like, it's, it's a shame how watered down Series 1 is this year. It really is. It really is a rotten shame. What they did, and I've been saying this, what they did was they took all of the product that they would have printed in Jumbos, said, you know what? Let's make hobby formats supreme in Series 1. Take all that and throw it into the, the hobby box or the, the blaster boxes and the hanger boxes and the fat packs, which I assume are coming out because I... I think I saw a listing for them on Steel City. Uh, what else is coming out? 
Um, I don't know what else is coming out, but, uh, you know, the blister packs, that's another thing, you know, everything, so on and so forth. You know, it's it's really a shame how bad they made Series 1 this year in terms of retail. And I said this in yesterday's video, when I have kids and I get them into the hobby of collecting baseball cards, I'm going to genuinely feel bad buying them a blaster box knowing they're not going to pull anything good. But as like a five-year-old or a six-year-old, you know, they're not going to necessarily know what they're pulling and what and what, what's good and what's bad. So I could see why, you know, you know, parents would buy their sons and daughters blaster boxes and, and things like that, which is completely fine because, you know, you know, what I'm going to do when, when my son and daughter, whatever I have, both one or the other, right, I'm going to get them into the hobby the same way I did. My grandpa, I don't know if I ever told this story or not. But it's funny because it's the most bizarre way I've ever got into the hobby. So here's how I got into the hobby. We were at a county fair. Okay, this is completely random, by the way. So stick with me through this whole entire story because it's bizarre. Okay, so we went to a, a county fair and it's like August. It's right before school starts. And, you know, all the kids are back in town from vacations like that. You know, the, the, the county fair is going on, right? And at this county fair, there are barns. And in these barns... There's vendors like like set up, like trying to sell things and things like that, like local people, you know. And one guy, I don't know what he was selling. I completely forget. But what he had was a complete set. I believe it was 2006 or seven tops. I completely forget what it was. But he had a complete set. And he told me, what team do you like? And at that time, my grandpa a lot of people don't know this, got me in to the New York Yankees. So I say I'm a Pirates fan, but the first interaction I had with Major League Baseball was actually watching the New York Yankees. Alex Rodriguez, Andy Pettit, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, you name it. Teixeira, I don't know if I said him. CeCe Sabathia, you guys name it. The Yankee legends. Jorge Posada, AJ Burnett, although he wasn't on that team, I don't think that year, but so on and so forth, I got invested in Major League Baseball from that, okay, and what happened was we searched through that box of complete set to try to find Yankees, and I walked away with a Derek Jeter card, a Jorge Posada card, and an Alex Rodriguez card from the complete set of whatever year it was. And that right there is how I got into baseball card collecting. Now, that's bizarre. That's not going to happen to everybody. I understand that. But how I intend on getting my kids into it is, well, I'm just going to start them early. I'm, I'm just going to put them in front of the screen when baseball's on. Hopefully they find some interest in it. And what I'll do is I'll just show them, like, you know, cards in front of their face. Like, let's say, like, a random base card like this, for example. Have them hold it, you know, so on and so forth. See what it's all about. And hopefully, that's how I get them into it. But we'll see what happens with that. Uh, probably not going to have kids for a long time. Uh, Grip and Rip is on the singles list right now. So we're not nowhere near uh, that point yet. But hopefully one day, hopefully one day. Don't know how much longer we'll have to wait for that. As I'm already 21, so we'll just have to wait and see on that. But Now the other story I want to talk about, which is a nice segue into this part of the video. As I casually am drinking my Pepsi because my throat is very dry. I saw, now I don't know if I've ever done this before, but I was watching All Elite Wrestling, AEW, right? A lot of you guys probably watch AEW in the comment section. And it's on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10. Okay, on the TN, or no, it's TBS, I believe. Yeah, they moved, they moved it to TBS last year. And I was sitting there, and I typically never pay attention to commercials on my phone, or while I'm on my phone, because... During commercial breaks, I'm always on my phone looking at my social medias and things like that. And what I found is quite funny. So TBS, which I believe TBS does have some sponsorship deal with Major League Baseball. I believe they carry some postseason games. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure TBS does carry some postseason and maybe regular season games for that matter. And... It was like about 9.30-ish last night, right before the main event started. And I see Julio Rodriguez in a chef's outfit on a commercial. I'm like, what is this? 
It's a commercial for Series 1. It's a commercial for 2023 Top Series 1 on a telecast for professional wrestling. And I said to myself, that right there sums it up for me perfectly. That's how you know Series 1 has failed when they're advertising Series 1 on a professional wrestling broadcast. I said I could not believe what I was actually watching. I don't know if anybody else saw that, but I certainly did. Maybe it's just by region. In my region, I saw I was like, there is no way I saw a 2023 Top Series 1 uh, commercial, right? It's like him like painting and him like cooking and baking with a chef's hat on. He's looking like Bob Ross in one thing. The commercial's pretty neat. I must say so myself. It's very unique. I never expected to see that on a Wednesday night watching professional wrestling. But I said, that's what you need to know right there, that Series 1 has failed. Because I have never seen that before. Now, I know Topps does commercials and promo videos for Series 1. But it's just the fact that it was on a Wednesday night at 9.45 when most kids and collectors are probably going to sleep at that time. Two, it's doing a professional wrestling broadcast. And three, it's on TBS where, you know, I don't think... I mean, I know they broadcast some games on TBS, but I didn't think their deal was that strong with each other, right? So I said to myself, that's how you know Series 1 has failed because they're trying to promote Series 1 so hard. They must have seen that numbers for retail sports cards for Series 1 is just in the crapshoot. They seriously must have seen something that we haven't seen because I don't know why they'd be promoting that on a professional wrestling broadcast. You guys tell me. I wish I could tell you the answer to that. I legit have no idea why they would promote baseball cards on a professional wrestling broadcast. Now, I'll tell you one thing, though. AEW promotes their cards all the time. AEW does have trading cards through Upper Deck. Upper Deck does produce AEW trading cards. So I was like, there's some correlation there with trading cards in AEW, but certainly not Topps. I could see if Topps made AEW, then that's a different story. But I was like, that just makes no sense. So I don't know if any of you guys have seen this commercial. I mean, it's a good commercial. I'm not going to say it's not. It's pretty unique. It's unique to say the least. I certainly didn't expect it to pop up on my television uh, watching AEW. But I was like, that's odd. I mean, I mean, I don't know how many other stations are airing this on. I did see it, though, on MLB Network, which, of course, that makes sense because it's Major League Baseball Network. They probably show it on ESPN. They probably show it. I mean, every station that carries baseball, they probably do show it on, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. But I just found it bizarre that, you know, it's like 9.45 or 9.30, Wednesday night, on a at a pro wrestling broadcast. I was like, that's just completely random. I didn't expect to see that at all. And it was kind of funny. I kind of, you know, laughed at it a little bit, but it is what it is. You know, sometimes that's what you got to do. If you got to promote it, you got to promote it. They must've upped the promotion money in their, in their marketing scheme or whatever they're doing with their marketing department. But I don't know what they're doing, but I saw a commercial. I was like, series one must be in serious, uh, jeopardy. If they are using TBS on a weekday night when people are practically going to sleep at that time for school and work the next day, I was like, they must be struggling to sell some blaster boxes of Series 1. And that does look like the case. That looks like the case. Everywhere I go on Facebook and Twitter and these groups and all these Twitter accounts that I follow that look at this stuff on a daily basis, I follow some accounts on a Twitter or, on, or accounts on Twitter that go to stores every day and take pictures of stocks and see what moves and what doesn't, right? There's accounts out there that do that, which I follow. And Series 1 doesn't move. And you know why it doesn't move? Because it's playing an optical illusion on your mind, right? Because they've printed so much of it, if people bought some, you wouldn't tell the difference. You just wouldn't tell the difference. Like that picture I used in yesterday's video, which is kind of funny because the person who actually took that picture, actually watches my videos. And on top of that, one of the people who wrote a review on yesterday's video, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, go watch it. It's a pretty good one. Someone who actually left a review watches my videos. So 
I must be spreading some good positivity out there because a lot of people are actually you know, sticking with the memo that I'm trying to preach here. That Series 1's junk. My friend texted me it, which he don't know I do this. So, you know, he just thinks I'm a casual collector, which he knows I'm a, I'm a hobby box guy. But he thinks I buy a lot of retail, which not no more. I don't. I used to, as you could tell, but I don't know more, right? And I saw a commercial and I was like, all right, what, what was this? So that must tell you, that must be a telling tale that Series 1 must be really, really flooding the markets right now. I mean, it's probably going to go on clearance, you know. If you're someone who likes to play the long game on things and wait for clearance, Series 1 might be that set. I guarantee you, I don't know when it will happen. My my guess is around when 2023 Top Series 2 releases, sometime first or second week of June. My prediction is that Series 1 will be on clearance in a couple months. Now, obviously, when I say a couple months, I mean June, but sooner rather than later, I mean, with all these different sets coming out, like, for example, we have Heritage supposed to be coming out in March, which I know legit nothing about. That set might be getting delayed legitly. I know nothing about that. Opening day, there's a word going around that opening day baseball cards are canceled. I'm actually kind of hoping that's the case because that's another set that's going to absolutely just sit on the shelves and just collect dust. So that could go by the wayside for all I care. And then Platinum Chrome Anniversary, which I'm really, really looking excited, like really looking forward to. Uh, Platinum Chrome Anniversary um, comes out, I believe, on March 27th. I believe, or 26, one of those two days, Platinum Crumb Anniversary comes out. So that's what the schedule looks like going forward. You know, I don't know after these sets release, as in like Heritage and Platinum Chrome, especially Pat Platinum Chrome, I don't know how well Series 1 is going to release. Maybe that's the reason why we don't have any news on opening day in Heritage, because they're afraid to put them out. I mean, is that the case? I, I don't know. That's just me taking a guess. But based off of what I've seen with my eyes and my ears looking out in the community and things like that and what my friends are telling me, I mean, in my area, at least, as I, as I predicted it would, Series 1's already sitting on the shelves. And like I said, there's so much of it out there, as you've seen in my thumbnail yesterday. I mean, you know, it, if, it's, if it's going and being bought off your shelves and someone bought a couple of them, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference because it, look, it would look as if nothing was ever touched. That's that's how it works. So I don't know what's going to happen here with Series 1. It's really a shame. I, I really wished, like I said in yesterday's video, there is a fine line that goes over and goes under, right? Someone brought up a, a, a question. He says, you complain about high print runs, but at the same time you complain about people not being able to find cards. Here's what I say to that. I said this in yesterday's video as well. There's a fine line somewhere out there in the middle that if you go too over, you overprint, and you go too under, no one can find anything. There is a fine line in that area somewhere that shows the perfect amount to be printed and call it a day. Do you know what I could compare it to? And I think someone compared it yesterday in the comment section. 2022 Tops Update. You tell me how much update you see out there right now? The answer to that is zilch. Nothing. That was probably the most perfectly printed and best tops flagship set they have released in years. Probably since 2018 update. Probably. And it was probably the correct printed amount. What were golds? Let me see what golds were. Golds were 1 and 14. So practically you have a pretty good shot of pulling, you have a 50% shot, essentially, seven packs, so you pretty much have a 50% shot of pulling a gold, as compared to, well, I can't, I mean, it's one in 99, so do 99 divided by seven, there's how many boxes you'd have to open to probably pull a gold, so, and same thing with these hanger boxes, these hanger boxes, right, one in three, one in three gold, one in three gold, now, series one, this year, one in 15, one in 15, five times more printed then, then update. They printed update perfectly. So I don't understand why we go from a perfectly printed update to an oversaturated and overprint series one. 
Now, I get Series 1 is always the most printed set out of 1, 2, and Update, but like I said, there's a fine line there. And Topps clearly with Series 1, retail at least, went above and beyond that line. So, just going to have to wait and see what happens with Series 1. I, I don't think it's looking good. I really don't. In my eyes, and if you're asking someone to judge who doesn't know anything about sports cards and how, how the market works, if you just ask someone random on the street, if they saw that, what does that mean? They'd tell you no one's buying it. But again, to a common person, that looks normal. But to us, you know, like I said, it's an optical illusion, right? When there's like 100 plus hanger boxes, as we saw with that thumbnail I posted yesterday, if someone buys like two or three of them, you would never be able to tell that one was bought because it just all looks the same. So I don't know. If every target is like that, how that picture is posted, I legit have no idea how they're going to sell out of that stuff. I legit have no clue. They're having trouble selling last year's Series 1 still to this day. So I have legit no idea what they're doing. And I, I just, I, I absolutely hate. What, what is this? Look at this. Look at this. I, these are all over the place. All over the place. All over the place. Brad Keller. Uh, Camilla Duvall. Max Castillo. Patrick Wisdom, we got Yadier Molina, we got Salvador Perez, we got Adrian Hauser, we have Cal Raleigh, Tyler McGill, we have a Aces card, I'll tell you what, best inserts of Series 1 by far, not even close, not even close, I love these cards, I wish Topps would actually produce a whole card set like this, with, with players and, and like, Things like that. I really wish they would. Because these cards, I'll tell you what. Very cool. Very, very, very cool cards. So guys, with that being said, do you think Series 1 has failed? If so, why or why not? I gave you my assessment. Uh, I, I completely, on the retail side of things, failed. It's a day-night difference, right? Hobby gets an A. Retail gets an F. Easy as that. It completely failed. So guys... Let me know what you think about this. Are you in the camp as I am? Or do you think I'm over-exaggerating? Or do you agree with me on some things? Do you disagree with me on some things? Why or why not? Let me know what you think in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next video.